I'm happy to see everybody out there. We're going to study how to do art related to all the senses today, this week. And we're going to obviously do something that's visual, which is optical illusions. We're going to do auditory or hearing, and we're going to make some wind chimes. We're actually going to do art with taste, which is our gumdrops. We're going to do touch today with this and smell. We're going to do one on a painting related to smell, which actually we painted with Kool-Aid and it smells like popsicles. It's wonderful. This is what we're going to do first today. We're going to do this piece. You had on your supply list what you're going to need, a board like this that we're going to glue onto, some construction paper, a brush for glue, a cup for the glue, sand, regular white glue, tacky glue. We, we use the uh, white glue to glue paper on, but the objects, they need to grab hold pretty quickly, so we use this tacky glue. If you don't have tacky glue, this works fine too. We're going to have, we'll have a little piece of toweling. I've just got an old washcloth here. And this is hard to see, but this is a piece of netting, like your veggies come in. And I mentioned you need a small ball. This I used an old half of an Easter egg. That's going to be our beach ball today. You can put whatever you want to on yours. This is just one that I used as an example. This is your art. It's always your art when you're doing it. So however you want to do it is just fine. As a matter of fact, there's something I didn't put in the supply list that I wound up using is some cotton balls. But you can use paper towels, anything you want. See, I put little clouds in there. Some popsicle sticks, something for stirring. See, I use the popsicle sticks here. And some greenery. I think I mentioned some grass, but anything like that will do. Paper plate, some markers. Now, I didn't even use markers, but you can draw seagulls or something in there if you want. Pencil, some scissors. That's all of it. Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started. Okay, first we're going to create our sky and we're just going to start that we're just going to put it on the board like this if your paper doesn't fit your board you can cut the board to fit the paper or the paper to cut the board whichever you'd like to do again this is this is your art whatever works for you and we're going to figure out how we want the sky to look and the water and the beach so i just drew a line like this through here where my water is going to be. And it's kind of hard for you to see. I'll mark it on here. I would just do it with a pencil, but I'll use the marker so you can see it a little better. Because this is just a cut line. So we're going to go ahead and cut that. Now, we're going to put our sky down. And if you don't want your marks to show, my marks kind of show, you can just flip it over. Okay, now we're going to do some water. And I just kind of put your water right underneath the sky there. So you just don't see the edge of the blue. And we're going to draw another line. And this next line is going to be show where the water is and, when, and the rest of it will be beach. And your cutting doesn't have to be super precise here. And we're just going to put this right under. And remember, we're talking about touch today. And that's why we're using different textures. OK, textures is what something feels like. So if there's a little bit of texture on this paper. It's smooth. My board is a little ripply. That's a different texture. We have soft. We have kind of ridged here. We have the wood and it's hard to see, but right here we have a little volleyball net, which is a different texture. The sand, the beach ball, the trunk of the tree, the leaves of the tree, excuse me, fronds, coconuts round, and that is all touch. So you could even possibly, if you close your eyes, be able to see, feel everything in your scene and tell you, and figure out what it is. Okay, next we're going to glue this down. And after we glue it down, we're gonna put our sand in. And that's a little messy. 
So you want to make sure you've got something underneath your piece of work that will gather all the sand. So when we're done, we can put it back in the uh, container. And again, if you don't have sand, that's okay too. You can just draw it in. But this is how we're going to, I like my water where it is now. So I'm just going to draw a line along the edge so I'll know where the position is. And I'm going to glue that water down with my white glue. Or the cat, like I said, whichever glue you have is fine. I'm going to go around the edges because we don't want the edges to pop up. And put that right along our line. Water. Now we can put our sky down. Same way, right around the edges. Okay. Now, right here, if you've got a little glue left over that, that uh, is on your paper, I'm going to wipe that down. When we put the sand on there, if the sand gets up in here, you'll have sand in the water. Now, the sand, if you look at it real close, it looks pretty smooth. It doesn't have lumps, many lumps or bumps in it because I put my glue on real smoothly. It looks actually kind of lumpy in the, in the camera, but this is nice smooth sand. Now, if you look right here, now I did this on purpose where I put the volleyball net in the sand. I left it kind of lumped up because that's the way sand would look if you stuck something in the sand there, a little sand up there. But if you put this glue on unevenly, this whole thing is going to be lumpy and bumpy. If you want it to be that way, that's great. But I just wanted to let you know because once it dries, it'll even when the glue dries, it'll be a little bit darker in the lumpy areas because there's a lot more glue in there. I'm going to take my glue now. And I'm going to pour some into the cup. This may take a minute, but go ahead and get all the glue you think you might use. It takes a good bit. Now, depending on how big your workpiece is. Yes, you'll be using a paintbrush. And we're gonna, we have to work pretty fast because we spread this glue out kind of thin and it dries really quickly. So we kind of have to do a neat job, but just do it quickly. Okay, remember this brush, this is a paintbrush that I'm using. Once you use it, you need to put it in water, water pretty quickly so the glue doesn't dry in it and you mess up your brush, which is why I have water here. Okay, make sure that's all cleaned off. Okay, I'm going to put, I want you to see the consistency of this. Okay, that's pretty good there. If it's much thicker than that, you could add just a little bit of water into it, just a little bit. Depends on how thick your glue is and mix it up real good so it'll go on evenly. And again, we're going to do this pretty quickly. Actually, I think I'm going to put just a little bit of water in this one, just a tiny bit. And again, it's going to be different with whichever glue you use. Okay, again, you want it painted. And I know you can't see this white on white, but you want this glue. Put it on pretty quick, nice and smooth. There's not any big ridges in it. You don't want your glue up on the water because the sand will get in. And I'm using a pretty big brush here for this too, so I can get the glue on quickly. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and put the sand on. So this is where the mess comes in, which is why I like it so much. And cover it all real good. You can even kind of gently tap it to make sure it's stuck in there very, real well. Yeah, I think that'll do it. And off we go. Little spots here and there. If you want, you can put just a little bit more glue in there if you want. Okay, we've got a beach. We've got water. We've got sky. And we've got lots of sand on the table. It's going to take me a minute to clean this up, so... While we're uh, waiting for you guys to catch up, we'll patch my sand up a little bit. Okay, I think that's going to do it. Now we can go on to our next step after I'm done cleaning up my creativity. What we're going to do next is a little strange, but we're going to water our glue down a good bit and we're going to paint it on the water. And that's going to cause that paper paper to ripple up a little bit, give you some little ripples in the water for the ocean. And some, it'll put a little bit of a shine on it. It's hard to see here, but that'll just add a little bit more texture to it. So you want to water your glue down to where it kind of looks like paint. And it dries pretty quickly. So 
gooey and ooey. Okay, and just put real quickly, paint that glue on there. I did add some water to my glue to thin it down to more of a paint consistency. It'll just make a nice little bit of texture on there with the rippled paper. What I like to keep handy here is a towel on my lap. One end wet, one end dry, so I don't have to go far to. All right, next we're going to lay everything out to see how we're going to do it. You don't want to just start gluing everything down, but we're going to lay everything out. And you can avoid the water right now until that glue dries, but it dries, like I says, it dries. And I'm going to start with my palm tree. Palm trees don't have little branches like that, so I'm going to break that off. You see my palm tree here? And you don't want everything down here below the water because the trees planted here, and when you look out on the beach, you will see, you know, this will be above the line of sight, so it, so you're not gluing it into the water. You're just, because that's closest to you, it's going to look thickest, bigger. You can use a popsicle step. You could use any. You know, that's what I did my first one with. Chanel stem, fabulous. That would be perfect for it. Anything that you got that looks palm tree-ish. Like I said, this is just a random stick. Doesn't have to be any, you don't have to get fancy with it. Well, that's okay. You don't need a stick. If you got a, like I said, a, a popsicle stick, you can even use a piece, of, I think it's a palmetto frond, something like that. Yeah, you could twist a piece of paper. Let me see if I've got any. I don't have any thin paper here, but absolutely. Cut a strip of paper and roll it up. Is there, oh, this is my cheat sheet. I'll tear it up. Can you see that? Just a piece of paper. If you got a piece of paper, you are good to go. And that'll work just as well, too. Okay, we've got this. And remember, we're not gluing anything down right now. We're just seeing how it looks. Uh, I think the next thing we'll do is the beach umbrella. There's our beach umbrella, okay, which is just a piece of paper plate. And you can put it however big you want. You can, we're going to start out small here. You don't even have to necessarily have an umbrella. Remember when you do something like this, it's your art. It's not somebody else's. So I just give you some ideas. What you do with it, that's all up to you. Okay, I'm going to cut that down a little bit. I think I'm just going to leave it on the side. Okay, so we've got our umbrella there, and we've got to be able to stick it in the sand. Okay, and got to have a beach towel, which, like I says, don't cut up your good cloths. You don't even have to use a washcloth. I just happen to have an old one. If you don't have cloth, you can use a piece of paper. Here's my little beach towels and my beach ball. Like I said, this is just half of an Easter egg. We'll put this one here. Let's see. We need some leaves for our palm tree. This I just got a magnolia leaf, but you can, again, use anything you got. You can use construction paper, anything. It's yours. It's going to be on your wall. Okay, we've got some palm fronds. I'll just stack them up here. And if you're going to have a palm tree, you got to have some coconuts. So I've got some coconuts there. And let's see. Ah, the volleyball net. This is going to be a little tiny volleyball net. Do you ever go to the beach and see people playing volleyball? Because remember, this is a different texture. It feels differently. And we're trying to get a lot of different textures on here because that's what we're learning about. This week is the census. Just regular glue is fine. It'll take a little longer to dry. The thing that's about tacky glue is it's literally just tacky. And when you put something on there, it doesn't move very much until uh, it's dry. So if you have to pick it up, it'll stay. But regular glue is fine. Let's see. So we're going to fix a volleyball net. And these are a little bit long, so I'm just going to break them. Now I'm going to set them here. See, one's longer than the other, but those, it's perspective because this one's farther away. And this one's closer. This is going to look better, bigger, even though they're the same. And there's my little net. Now, like I guess as I didn't mention in the list, uh, supply list, cotton balls, and you don't have to do this if you want, but... Uh, I think the cotton balls give it a nice look. Again, you could even cut a piece of paper to make a cloud. This, I'm just stretching it out a little bit. 
fluffy clouds. Clouds aren't solid and flat. They're fluffy and they're different thicknesses. We don't have, want it to rain, so we don't want to put a lot of clouds in. Okay, and sometimes you see seagrasses on the beach. We put some seagrass in there. A sandcastle. Well, we could actually make a sandcastle out of sand. Let's try that, but we'll do that last because we've got everything laid out here. If you could like draw on a sandcastle with the glue and then put the sand on it, that'd work pretty good. Okay, I'm going to start gluing my things on here and then I'm going to put my palm fronds on. Again, if you don't have leaves or anything to cut up and use, instruction paper, paper that you've colored, grass, anything you want to use. This collage has lots of pieces in it. Fortunately, tacky glue dries clear. That's a good thing. Okay, now we've got to have some coconut. And also your parts of your collage can go off the page. They don't have to be all inside the edges of your board. All right, that's plenty of coconut. Okay, now let's put our volleyball net, glue that down. Now I do use my fingers in the glue, which is how, why I have a towel here. We're gonna draw with glue. Hmm, turrets. This is going to be a sandcastle, but it's not going to be a beautiful sandcastle. Or a beehive, gotta have some turrets. Flag, there you go. Now it's a ship. I haven't made a sandcastle in a long time. All right, but we gotta put our glue here, here, and here. Because remember when you put a post in the ground in the sand, the sand comes up around it. You just, just top it off. There's the sand castle. The sand will stick pretty much if anywhere that it's contacted the glue. So just, just tap it off onto your newspaper. But you see what I was talking about where I put where the umbrella is going to go there so it really looks like it's sticking in the sand. Now real quick while you're finishing up, how many different textures do you feel on your collage? How many different kinds of touch? Okay, I'm getting ready for our smell scents. That is painting with Kool-Aid. And since we're doing the senses, it also smells good. So we're next sense that we're doing is the sense of smell. Now don't sniff the powder when you open it because it'll you'll have it in your nose. But we'll mix it up and use it as paint and it's really easy. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and make my paint and I just have a few colors here and they turn they turn out a little bit differently than you think they do. So I want to tell you ahead of time that I would get a piece of paper to test your colors on before you use them because they don't look like much in the cups. Oh that smells so good. <laughs> There's a group of houses that are all close together in Charleston, South Carolina and it's called Rainbow Row and they're all painted different colors. And it doesn't matter if you uh, what color of Kool-Aid you use, it's just whatever you got. This is what my store had, but there's a lot more different colors. So what we're gonna be doing is we're going to draw the outlines of the houses today and then painting them. And remember, test your colors first. Now, it's suggested that you use warm water. This is not warm water that I have. To. We're just using the drink powder to make paint. And here's all we're going to put. One what? tablespoon. Just one. Okay, we're going to just put that one tablespoon in each one. And I'm going to just mix these up with my sticks. Now, when you mix them up and you change colors with your stick, rinse them off it's like you would a paintbrush. Those colors get intense. See how dark that gets? Now also, what I wound up doing is I watered towards the end, I watered some of the color stuff down because they got pretty dark. And when you stir it, it might get a little bit gritty in the bottom. Just stir it until it all dissolves. The hot water would help. Definitely, and the suggestions well, were with hot water. I just don't have a hot water tap right here, but uh, just regular uh, warm water out of the tap is, is, is helps a lot. And they all mix up a little bit different too. Some of them dissolve a little easier. By the way, this does stain 
So be careful where you put it. I'm going to put these over here so I won't spill them everywhere. And I'm going to draw our houses. And to make it easy, I'm going to use a ruler. And all I'm going to do is just draw a bunch of straight lines for the houses. And you don't draw them just like mine. Like I said, it's your artwork. Okay, so we'll have... It says, I just use a ruler because it's a lot faster. And they're not all over the paper. Some of them will have flat roofs and some of them will have peaked roofs. If I want that roof to come up in the middle, I'll just put a dot here, then draw up to that dot. Now I'm just gonna put some doors and windows in. And these don't have to be perfect. It's like eyes in a mouth. You don't have to draw your lines just where I am. It's just however you want your house to look. Almost done with this. Big window and some shutters here. Almost done here. Yeah, I'm going to start painting now using my Kool-Aid. And remember, we're going to test our colors before they put we put them on our paper. So I'm going to do that. I've got a pretty big brush, but any kind of brush will do. Okay, that's like a nice pink color. I think that's Tropical Punch. Put a nice pink one in the middle. Now, a lot these can get a little blotchy. I don't know if you can see it on here where the colors are a little bit different. You can fix that after you paint. You can add more color to it. We're just going to go with this tropical punchy color here. Put that on the big one, get some of the water out of the brush. And we're painting with Kool-Aid. Now, if your colors are darker than you want them to be, you can put some of it in another cup and add a little water to it. So it's a little more of a pastel color. Pastel is a lighter color. Instead of a dark red, it would be a light red, like a pink. The smell is awesome. But actually in some of this, I kind of like a blotchy color. Makes it look like it's got a texture to it. I just used a ruler and made boxes, basically. It, it's it's not very hard. I just used a ruler because I'm not really good at doing straight lines. And the purple came out really dark. Now, I did water it down after I painted this, and I painted this color. You can just water down a little bit of it and see how it works. Then you've got more of the purple. Yeah, that surprised me, the black. That's okay. That's that's good, but but that's the both the great. Let's see what color we've got here. That's a darker one. I like that orangey color. Let's see, we'll do that on the bigger house. I find if you can stroke all in one sweep and not stop and restart, it makes it a little bit less blotchy, but that's okay. Blotchy looks like stucco. And there's also, or at least there used to be, you know, green Kool-Aid and yellow Kool-Aid you could use as well. You can combine all the senses into one piece of art. That would be great. Okay, what color am I on now? Yeah, here's the purple. I'm going to go ahead and water down my purple because I know how dark that is. Yeah, yeah it's dark because I do like the pastel on this. It's not turning purple hardly at all. That's all right. It's great. Gray's a pestle. Yeah. Everybody's working hard. It comes out black and then it changes. Oh, that's a nice color. Okay, while we're painting, I'm going to finish up painting. I'm going to mix one up, see what happens. Oh, I like it. It's actually kind of brick colored. It's more orange. Now I'm just mixing up colors. There we go. Bye-bye.